coming out of the one stop performance shop. Um, we've got our new Yamaha Sidewinder clutches here. Uh, as you know, the new turbo sled has a lot of new things on it. So as you can see, this clutch is different than any other clutch they've ever made before. So we needed some custom tools to be able to work with it. So we're gonna show you what we got. Basically what we started with is we got our universal spring compressor. So this tool will work for almost any clutch, uh, primary and secondary for almost any machine. So this is a super versatile, super handy tool to have. And then we also have our Yamaha specific clutch holder and spider breakdown tool with this and these. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how all this stuff works and show you how we break down a clutch. And basically the main reason that we would wanna break our clutch down is to change the shimming. So basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna change the position of the weight to the roller, relative to the roller. So we can move this spider up or move it down in order to change the performance of the clutch. So we'll show you how it breaks down. So we've got the secondary here too. This is the primary. And we'll go ahead and start with the primary. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is break down the primary. And so the first thing we have to do is use our spring compressor and we're gonna just go ahead and remove the cover. So we'll just slip it down over our tool here. And then we'll just take, so the compressor has basically three parts and we're only gonna need this part right here that slips over the top and then we'll put our washer in our nut. And all we need to really do is just snug it down just to tear so that we can take the tension off so we can release the bolts. Now we'll just take and loosen up our nut to let off the spring tension. Okay, now we can remove our cover and our spring. So as you can see, stuck stuff. So now we got our spider and our clutch and everything exposed. So now what we're gonna do is take our clutch with the cover off. We're gonna go over to our breakdown tool here and we'll just flip it on it up into the hole as you can see it locks down and then we just take and snug this up by hand so this is just so that it can't walk up off of the tangs as you're tightening it and now we're going to take our torch go ahead and thoroughly heat our spider we want to easily heat the spider for one to two minutes depending you want to start hearing the, the lock tight starting to clamp off and loosen if you don't heat your spider enough, you will probably ruin your spider. So this is the disclaimer. Without enough heat, the spider will probably get ruined. So this is a very crucial part of it. You need to heat it evenly too, all the way around from the bottom to the top. And basically you'll know that your spider is hot enough and everything is right because you'll put your tool on and the clutch will basically break loose. It won't have resistance and it won't be hard or dragging like the threads are galling. That, if you feel that, you need to stop and keep eating it. We just want to make sure that we're getting the heat all the way evenly around the whole piece. We don't want to ever direct the fire at our rollers or anything. We want it to be onto the spider only. Okay, so now with our with our spider smoking hot and everything heated up, we're going to take our tool and it goes in, basically sets in the finger and sets on all four points like that. Then we're going to take our extender and we're going to go on and we're basically going to just hold it and give it a good break and that's how it should be it should break loose and then it should just have slight resistance to spin off so now we can just go ahead and spin the spider off okay so now with our with our spider broken off of the clutch you can see we can expose our shim 
that right there is what we're gonna change. So now you can see these shims, we're gonna come out with different thickness shims for all of our different clutch kits to have different performance for what you need for your sled, for whether you have your power turned up, your trail riding or whatever you're doing, we can tune our clutch with those shims. So we're gonna break down our converter now. This is our Yamaha Sidewinder converter. Uh, as you can see, it's a little different than any other converter of Yamaha's, but our tools are all gonna be perfect for it. So we'll just take and, we haven't loosened anything yet. We just put it in the, the machine here. We're gonna tighten this down just a few little turns. And then we'll go ahead and pop these three bolts out. Okay. And now, as you can see, it just drops right out. And now you wanna notice, see we wanna, we wanna note where the springs are located in here. So you can see we got one mark here. The other tang is over here. So we've got already marks on our clutch. We wanna make sure we mark that so we know where we were to make a change. So now we'll just go ahead and you wanna hold your hand on this because once, as you can see it unsprung, that is crucial because if you just put this back without any twist in it or you have it twisted the wrong way, then the converter won't function properly. So you need to know the orientation of how the spring was wound up into the, into the cover. we can go ahead and take our spring and helix out and as you can see it's numbered zero three six nine and then uh let's see one two and three in the in the converter so now as we change the position of this spring it's going to make our shift different and we can even change the entire rate too so we can do a lot of different tuning with just the converter here so we can go ahead and we're just gonna we're gonna put it back to the way it was but as you can see, this hole, it was in the number one position. We marked it right there. So this is gonna go in there. And then we were in the number three position. So then we're gonna take and we're gonna put this back into the number three. And now the converter, when it gets put back together, we're gonna pinch it together here. And then you're gonna notice how the tangs are all the way to this side, right? So as we, we wind the clutch, we wanna wind it into it. So as it shifts out, it's always got tension to it. So we're gonna take and we're gonna to have to twist this slightly. And the easiest way to do it is get the bushing back on the tang, twist it, and then pick up the bottom clutch into it. So if, you, if you're doing it all one man here, you can kind of get this up where you need to be. And you can get this over. And then we can slide right in. See, and then we can get it in. And now we can set our part down. And we can start one nut right here. And now with one nut started, now we can take and tighten our thing back up, get our part square, get our helix back square to the converter, and go ahead and tighten all our nuts up. See, and now you can also see when everything is positioned back correctly, the roller is touching on the ramp and the, the part can sit fully down and all the bolts can get tightened up. So then we know everything is put back together in the correct order. We can just go ahead and snug back our bolts. And then when we release our spring, it should shift right back to the very top without doing anything. We have everything wound up right and now we should not be able to twist it if everything is right because you want the spring pressure to be pushing against the ramps okay